All right, good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Thursday, June 15, 2023 Planning Board meeting. If we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> All right, introduction to board members. We, to my far left, we have Paul Amatucci, Jerry Graybill, myself, Michael LaRue, and Phil Roy. Uh, we also have Terry Wilson, the assistant to the planner, town planner and code enforcement. We also have Lee J. Feldman and Hannah Boney from SMPDC. Um, first is the public hearing for site plan review, stormwater, road improvements, and public Public Recreational Area, Sawmill Hill and Moulton Street, U174, R1 and RP Zone, Town of Berwick. You want to just come up and give us a quick description? Yep, that should be fine. I am uh, Mike Zarber representing uh, SLR Consulting. Um, done the design for the town of Berwick for their uh, stormwater improvement and road improvements on Moulton Street. Um, parts of First, Second, and Copeland Road as well, or Copeland Street. Um, basic, basically, the project entails reconstruction of uh, the majority of all of Moulton Street from Salma Road up to Second Street. Um, and improvements, particularly to stormwater outfall number 007 um, under the MS4 program and all of that area of Moulton Street, um, the parts of 2nd, 1st, and Copeland um, that are included in this project also drain uh, water to that existing 18-inch uh, outfall that exists um, on Moulton Street on the park property that's uh, at the um, downhill side of Moulton Street near Salmon, Salmon Falls River. Um, particularly we're in front of the planning board, obviously, for the uh, shoreland zone portion of it, um, which is really the stormwater improvement side of things, um, and the design for that um, has some stormwater components to it. A, uh, I call it a detention pond. It's really a uh, bio bioretention facility um, that will catch the water as it comes down uh, from all the streets that were named in this entire system. Uh, will drain through this biofiltration system, which is a um, treatment facility for water quality um, improvements, particularly for um, nitrogens, phosphorus, uh, those kinds of items. Uh, there are pre-treatment facilities to this um, particular facility as well that uh, pick up things like sediments, uh, sands and grits um, prior to trash, other things that, that floatables that exist in the, in the stormwater system. Um, are picked up prior to discharging into the biofiltration system. Um, and then the water is filtered through this biofiltration system, which substantially is a basin with mulch at the bottom of it um, that uh, allows the water to filter through it uh, at a fairly high rate uh, for the most part, but it also is very effective at treatment of uh, those nitrogen and phosphorus type um, chemicals or facility uh, items that, that get picked up in the stormwater. Um, it then discharges to um, a plunge pool and effectively eventually to the Salmon Falls River, which is where it currently is going uh, today. So, um, but I'm happy to answer any questions or. Yep, anyone in the public wants to voice their opinion? Okay. What? Yeah. Oh, this is just a public hearing. So. Okay. Um, all right, seeing no one moves forward, I'll close that public hearing. Um, next is the public comment. If anyone wants to speak in the public comment? Okay. Moving along to approval of minutes for May 18th and June 1st. I make a motion that we approve the minutes as written. I will second that motion. Okay, further discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. May 18th. Not All right, so, yeah. so let's just do them separate. So you want to make a motion for just May 18th? Just May 18th that they get approved. I will second. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next is the June 1st minutes. I will make a motion that we approve them as drafted. I'll second that. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. With one abstaining? Okay, thank you. All right, moving along. Old business, site plan review, stormwater, road improvements, and public recreational area, Sawmill Hill and Moulton Street, U174, R1, and RP Zone, Town of Berwick. That's you again. <laughs> Well, being as I just did the presentation for it, um, <laughs> I'd be happy to rerun re through it again, but nope. um, I'm happy to answer any, any further questions. Um, I guess I should note um, there was a resident that uh, called in, I believe, and uh, stopped into the office, um, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm not sure yeah, exactly which office, but um, I got a hold of James as well regarding a um, stormwater pipe off of First Street, um, which actually is beyond the the limits of this particular project. There's a um, another cross pipe that's about, I'd say about 50 feet further down First Street from where our project ends. Um, it does eventually tie into the same system, but it's separate, meaning there's no direct catch basin ties to it. Um, and it was not you know, part of our survey component um, or part of the scope of our project simply because it's it, Beyond the first catch basin down First Street, and uh, therefore it wasn't, uh, you know, included in our project. But um, nonetheless, uh, I think she had, you know, made it made it, you know, known that there was some a clogged pipe maybe across the street there, which which I did look at it before the meeting, um, and it does look like there's maybe an inlet side of it that needs to be either cleaned out or, you know, it, it's covered over with silt right now. So, uh, can't tell if the pipe's quite functioning though under the road. It's very shallow pipe. It's actually stick you could see the corrugated metal pipe sticking out of the road uh, on First Street. So, um, I, I can't tell if it's really functioning or not. It might be crushed uh, or otherwise not, not functioning currently. But is that something that uh, uh, Public Works could handle, uh, or do, do does it need engineering? No, I think I think it just needs to be you know, looked at and, and maintained. It'd probably be best if you know once we got the system tied in, there is a pipe um, that would that did look like it's functioning. It's, it's a plastic pipe uh, that comes across uh, the driveway that ties back into the same catch basin that we're replacing and improving. Um, and when that's done, you know the system should be able to handle the water as long as it gets directed in there. But I gather that the problem is further up her property and or on you know further down the road for like I said from what you know our scope included so but I did want to just let you know that that had come in regarding this project I know James and I had had some communications and she had a phone call and a couple of emails that uh, and I did include about. something in your package regarding that mm -hmm. it said it's titled resident comments yes mr. chair yep yeah. uh, just general concerns about the stormwater pool I know we had discussed it at the site I just want to make sure it was for the record uh, I just have concerns, one, about the lifespan of, of that pool sure. and the, the recurring cost to the town for, for maintaining that as designed and making sure it's going to be effective for its lifespan. Um, do, do you have any figures on, on what it might cost annually to, to maintain and upkeep that? I could give you a rough number. Um, I, I would say in the vicinity of, you know, typically an inspection contract or maintenance contract for that, for basically the labor side of it, and I, I can't really speak to the um, the cost of replacement of materials. But typically, the contracts are in say the twenty five hundred to maybe you know six thousand, seven thousand dollar range annually. Depending on the exact components of the system, um, we would basically give the stormwater design uh, to a, a contractor that's that's you know a qualified stormwater consultant. Um, and they, they can give the town a price on, you know, looking at the, the components per year. Um, you know, things like replacing the mulch, which is really the most problematic um, issue, you know, every every couple of years. 
um, that may need to get replaced. You know, you're probably looking on the vicinity of you know the five to ten thousand dollars worth of worth of mulch, um, you know, to be replaced in that biofiltration system. Um, beyond that, other regular maintenance that your public works department most likely does already, things like vacuuming out uh, the storm components. Maybe they they contract that, maybe not, but. Um, you know, those are pretty typical for public works departments to, you know, perform on their own. Um, most of that stuff can be done, you know, with the guidance of the um, maintenance contractor, um, you know, in conjunction with your public works, or it can be contracted out separately, depending on how you guys, you know, like to, um, you know, do your budgets. Mm -hmm. Yep, Chair. Okay. Along the lines, I think, Phil, where you're going with this is, if it's not properly maintained, it's going to cost the town more. It's going to cost more run. in the long yeah. run. So I so, want to make sure yeah. that we, you yeah. know, take into account all the upfront and recurring costs, so we don't create, you know, a financial pitfall for our right. taxpayers. So I don't know how that can be structured. <coughs> well, what, that would be what, a contract with. It, it sounds like it's a contract with with the inspector, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. It's. There's companies out, out there that do, you know, the inspection work. Um, they're familiar with the types of systems that we've designed. You know, they're, in, they're DEP approved items. There's several of them. Um, we happen to choose uh, an ACF environmental at the time. It was, it's now uh, part of Ferguson Waterworks, but um, they you know, make this particular biofiltration system that we, that we chose to use. Um, it was, I think at the time, you know, we, we had gone through a couple of different options with the town, and that was the system that they, you know, seemed to like the best, um, at least at that particular time, which is probably in 2020-ish. Um, but it's a good system. We've used it in a couple other um, locations throughout the state as well. Um, Well-known system, again, approved by DEP as, you know, as a functioning system. But it does need to be properly maintained, like any, you know, uh, stormwater components nowadays. They, they need to be properly maintained to function. Um, I think it's just you know something that the town has to factor in to its uh, you know to its annual budget, obviously. But uh, MS4 components, I think you're obligated to be doing that anyways, um, you know, for uh, you know water quality purposes. So, thank you. <coughs> yeah. So yeah, one one of the things uh, you know, and I think you partially touched on it. Is, is there this type of inspection and uh, maintenance going on on a yearly basis now on any part of the system? Uh, I believe under the MS4 program, Public Works is obligated to produce an annual report with um, all of their MS4 items, things that they've, you know, roads that they've swept, catch basins that have been cleaned okay. uh, or inspected or otherwise. There's really, right now, there's the other parts of the system, the biofiltration system, you know, doesn't exist. The pretex, which is a, uh, the, I mentioned about the sand and trash filtration type pretreatment system, um, those currently don't exist in this particular system. Uh, there are catch basins that are associated with it right now. Uh, I would imagine that those are, you know, pumped or inspected, you know, for, for functional so it's purposes. A re required but, so it's compliance issue. Similar. These are a little bit more, you know, Intense, just simply because we've added additional features uh, okay. or infrastructure to it. So, thanks, Mike. Yep. Okay, Anna, do you have anything else to add? Um, no, not at this point. I just wanted to, uh, I guess, one thing. Um, since the last time that we saw this application, um, we did get comments back from Christy Rabaska, um, who is the MS4 coordinator for. Berwick and for the general southern main area. Um, we got responses from those from the applicant um, to satisfy those comments. So as far as that is concerned, we're all good to go. Okay. So next is just approval of the application. For completeness? No, just approval. Oh. We already did that. I will make a motion that we approve. I'll second that. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <coughs> Moving on in old business. Amendments to land use ordinance, subdivision regulations, village overlay district, design guidelines, public hearing to be set for July 20th. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
<coughs> nope. About that, that would be in the public hearing. So this is just a discussion for us to discuss. Oh, okay. Um, I can talk after if I... Uh, in the, for the public hearing, when we set the public hearing. Yep. Okay. <coughs> um, so... With all these land use ordinance changes, I, I don't... Um, Irish isn't here today, so it kind of... We should probably defer yeah. until she's available. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't want to make any motions without her present, since she's the one that has to be enforcing those. I think it would be inappropriate on on our part, but that's just an opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd like to hear her. <clears throat> okay. I could um, I could talk to a couple of the items for you if you'd like. Yeah, if um, you'd like, Cameron. please, DJ. That'd be nice. <laughs> okay. So uh, the two. Parts of the ordinance amendments that I can specifically speak to is the new addition of the automotive convenience store, um, which is a new use proposed. Um, I drafted that um, for you uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually, um, which it's everything is on that one sheet, but it's broken down into a couple of component parts. So the first one is excuse me, the definition of what an automotive convenience store is right now. You don't have a definition, even though you've had, you know, these newer gas stations with convenience stores um, allowed in town. So I figured I would draft a definition of what that really is. Um, and it's, as we've got it here, it's a retail operation that provides both the sale of food and household products, along with the sale of petroleum and EV charging stations for vehicular fueling. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, <clears throat> the biggest part of this, um, I think, and it was discussed at the last meeting, is that uh, going along with automotive repair, automotive and motorcycle repair facilities, um, I kept it in the same zones that those were allowed in, um, R1, R2, R3. Um, Village Commercial, um, RCI, and um, the LR Zone. And I know that some of the comments that were made or concerned about at the last meeting were whether or not it truly belonged in the R1, R2, and R3 Zone. So I think that's something that's up for discussion for you folks to um, see if you want to maintain those that this new use in that zone. Uh, I was trying to just be consistent in the sense that um, I understand the sensitivity around gas stations, um, except that um, different parts of town need gas stations. And um, this was one way to make sure that there were options available um, for those types of facilities. <clears throat> um, also, um, I drafted section 8.38 which is automotive convenience store performance standards that would go into Article 8, Section 8.38 for you. And I won't go through all of them. I'm sure you've had an opportunity to read them. But they are all of the types of performance standards that the um, applicant, any applicant, would be required to meet as part of their um, design criteria. Uh, very quickly, you know, there's, there's dark sky friendly lighting that's required. Um, on poles no taller than 15 feet. Um, I know some places like to get to 20, 25 feet, and um, those are very tall poles, and they disperse a lot more light. So trying to keep them lower would try to keep it more dark sky friendly uh, in the community as a whole. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is um, down in number uh, letter I, um, we're suggesting that all new gas stations would be required to have at least three EV charging stations so that um, you can start converting over to having public facilities available for, um, for EV charging other than um, municipal type of facilities or private homes. So we've added that. Um, and we did suggest that operating hours for the stores would be 6 to 11, 6 a.m. to 11 p.m., but that gas filling could occur 24 seven. Um, 
people do drive around at a very early morning or during the middle of the night and need petroleum. So um, we've put that in there. Uh, you can certainly modify that if you'd like. Um, we've added that pumps will be, be no closer than 100 feet from any residents. Um, I think those were the real highlights of this whole use category for you. Um, if you choose to want to move forward with that, and certainly we can modify it any way you, you want to um, after the public hearing. <clears throat> the other piece that I can talk to tonight, um, I didn't, was not part of drafting some of these other pieces, but um, after the last meeting, we had the conversation about design standards. Um, and lo and behold, I forgot about it. Um, but um, back in 2018, I had actually drafted what you have in front of you is the Town of Berwick Design Guidelines. And um, it's basically what I discussed with you folks of being able to put together for you um, for, for the for um, requiring um, new developments to meet these, these types of standards. Um, it's not saying that they have to design or build exactly to them, but it gives the applicants uh, an idea on what we're looking for for taste and feel. One of the things that James and I talked about was on page, on the first inside page um, of adding um, under applicability that they not only be, when we drafted them, that we drafted them for the village overlay district, but that they be in the village overlay district and along the major corridors of Route 4, 236, and 9. That, um, I think, um, goes to your concerns, Phil, but I think that this, uh, with adding that, goes to the issue of design criteria along all the major corridors in town. Um, and I think that... Um, one of the things that James was considering, and, and um, certainly you folks can have a, a major uh, play or say in that, is that this would become um, ordinance rather than just guidelines. Guidelines are suggested. Here you go, folks. Um, this is what we're trying to design to versus an absolute requiring them to meet these these types of standards. So, um Ironically, I did find them in, in your file, my electronic file at work, and we did do it in 2018. So they've been hanging around and there's been a, a major changeover with the, you folks on the board. There's been um, changes with us coming and going through various stages of, of staff turnover. Uh, and when I went back to my files, I found it. So um, you have already um, got something that's pretty close to ready to go. Thanks, Lee Jay. And I, if I may, yep. Mr. Chair, uh, I do see, per our last discussion, they, you actually have the picture in there of the McDonald's in Freeport. And I, I think you had mentioned uh, another community that, that has adopted similar standards. What community was that? Uh, Kittery. Kittery. Um, would it be within reason before we, we put these forth to, to, can we get a chop on, on their verbiage, what, what each of those towns looks like? and then craft that to make it our own. And, and the only reason I say that is I think we would be doing a huge disservice to our town and the feel and nature of our small town community if, if we allow strip malls and, and gas stations and, and stuff that just does not fit in with, with our country theme and feel of our community. Um, if we can put that in there, I, I think we're it's the best interest of the town to keep it looking like a small country town as opposed to, you know, box store central <laughs> yeah no i mean um there's a couple of ways to do it one would certainly be to um um get their 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 documents and you take a look at them i can tell you that that um since there's no copyright on it many of the pictures um and discussion in this came from the kittery document um we don't recreate the wheel. There's no secrets here. There's no shame um, in shamelessly plagiarizing what already works. <laughs> that's right, exactly. So um, many of many many parts of this document do come from the Kittery from the Kittery document. But be happy to um, try and track that down. I looked on their website, and um, I could not explicitly put my finger on it. But I, of course, I know the planners down there, and I'm sure I can get my hands on it. 
Um, and I think the the other way to do it, because I I think in general, and you tell me if you're if I'm wrong, uh, is that you know again many of the pictures are pretty much this is kind of what we're looking to do, but if we put some additional verbiage in under um, um, the general guidelines A section that talks about making sure that um, while these photos provide examples of what we're trying to achieve that. Um, utilizing existing development in town um, as a model um, would certainly provide that that ambiance and feel that you're looking to achieve um, so that they're not just, you know, going off and doing something that looks kind of neat and nice, but doesn't necessarily meet Berwick's um, fabric. Chair? Yep. Going along with what Phil said, Lee J. I I read... Uh, North Berwick and South Berwick's land use ordinance last night for convenience stores and gas stations. They have some good words in those that we should be looking at in Berwick as well to incorporate. Okay. We can do that. I'd be glad to share some of what I have with you or whoever. I have a lot of notes. Um, I would say probably the easiest for me to get them from you well, I, of course, have their ordinances. We we are a contract planner for South Berwick, as you know, and yep. um, I do a lot of work with North Berwick. So we have their ordinances. I can either just get it that way, or if you've got particular notes or issues that you want addressed, um, pass them to Irish and have her get those to me. Okay, we'll do. Awesome. Consensus is we're going to wait for Irish for the next meeting to discuss all the other amendments. Yeah, also, I think uh, it's probably good to get the public comment out as well before we start diving in so we can see what's coming in from. from well, we'd public. have to set the public hearing at that point. So we'd have to have. We still Irish. have to have a good draft before we do well, that. Well, we have our draft right yeah. here. Yeah. This yeah. is our draft, but uh, if we want to discuss it with Irish, we would be moving the public hearing one more meeting. Okay. So I, think, I think we wouldn't be doing our due diligence if we didn't include her. That's, okay. that's my opinion. All right. Yeah. Okay. 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 That's fine. We can wait. Um, so that's basically that for now, right, Lee J? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I just before we leave this entire topic, one thing that just stuck out to me when we were talking about you know page one of this uh, automotive convenience store editions, uh, five thousand square feet of of retail big. space for the convenience store. That is a big building. Actually, thank you for pointing that out. I failed to I failed to discuss that. Um, that was a number that I pulled um, just from my head at the time, but Hannah and I had talked about it internally. And actually, I don't have a, a concern even dropping it to like, you know, 3,000, 3,500, maybe even smaller if you want. But that was just a like a placeholder at this point. But certainly, yes, um, it was much larger. And I tried to look at um, aerial photos of the, the Cumbie up on the school street corner just to get a feel for how big that is. And I think, you know, dropping it to, to no more than 3,000 square feet um, would be certainly doable for you folks. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so would that be something that everyone would be in agreement with? We set that down to 3,000, no loan larger than 3,000 square feet? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so let's adjust that. Anything else? Okay. All right. You'll send them to Irish, and then she'll send them out. Okay. So moving along, we have site plan review, commercial storage, uh, one Blackmore Road, R sixty eight eighteen Blackmore Road, LLC. Thank you. Good uh, evening, members of the board. Um, I know I have given my spiel a few times here now, so I'll just do sort of a quick overview unless you want all of the 
uh, sort of ins and outs of the proposal again. Yeah, just a quick overview. It should be fine. Um, so we are in the uh, rural com uh, commercial industrial district uh, proposing uh, many commercial storage units, uh, 14,000 square feet. And this is in addition to the existing permitted marijuana, uh, medical marijuana cultivation that's on site. Um, the existing use is to remain in addition to the proposed uh, many storage units. Um, stormwater is taken care of um, in two different uh, infiltration basins. Um, we will be applying for our main DEP permit. We're still in the notification period right now, um, so we have not submitted at this time, but we will be doing so uh, very soon here. Um, in our previous conversation, um, we had discussed um, the Berwick Fire Chief requesting a Knox box on the gate, um, and the police chief had no law enforcement issues, and the board had asked um, us to notify South Berwick uh, Board as well as their uh, responders. Um, we've sent packages to South Berwick at this time. Um, actually, one of them was to uh, Hannah Bonin for South Berwick, and um, we have not received uh, any feedback from South Berwick at this time, but that has been uh, submitted to them. Um, so the land use is allowed uh, via conditional use permit, and the second conditional use permit that we're requesting is for uh, just under 3,300 square feet of disturbance within the 75-foot stream protection zone. Um, this is to fill about 130 yards to create a conveyance swale uh, within the buffer, which you can see is this darker hatch area here. Uh, there is no proposed impervious surface um, within this 75-foot stream protection buffer. Uh, as part of our main DEP application, we're um, applying for the stormwater management law permit. But in addition to that, we also have to file a permit by rule for Section 2, which is activities adjacent to uh, protected natural resources. Um, so that would be DEP reviewing our impact uh, within the 75-foot stream protection district. Um, So at this point, um, I can go through or answer any further questions about the proposal, or I can also go through the conditional use permit uh, items for both requests as well. If I may. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just had a question about the 3,300 square foot backfill you're, that you're requesting a, way, a, where, a variance or a waiver? A uh, conditional use permit. Conditional use. Sorry, we, we are not requesting any variances or waivers, just the two conditional use permits, one for the land use and one for the uh, swale within the 75-foot stream protection. Okay, Hannah, do you have any comments for this? <clears throat> oh, I found. Hello. Um, only comment that I have, uh, the last meeting that we had for this project, we left it at uh, sending out the project for a third party engineering review. Um, we did, after some further discussion with the applicant, decide that uh, the permits from the DEP would essentially be duplicative of any engineering review that we would be getting. Um, so we didn't feel that it was necessary to send it out for that review. Um, so at this point, we are all set as far as that is concerned. No other comments, though. Okay, and then our actions tonight would just be approval of those two. Correct. Conditional uses. Yes. Okay. Can I ask that he identify himself, please? Okay. Uh, my name is Kevin Pullen. Thank you. My apologies. So the first motion, I'll uh, make a motion that it's the variance for the stormwater. 3,000. Uh, my apologies, uh, conditional use permit, conditional no use no permit. variance. Right. Yeah. Wait, say that again. There's uh, condition, two conditional use permits, no variances or, yeah. or waivers. Yeah, so the conditional use for the stormwater, right? Is that what it is, the stormwater? Yeah. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we approve that. I will. Go ahead. I'll second. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? All right. Okay. Second is the conditional use for the um, storage facility, right? Okay. I make a motion that we uh, approve it. Second that. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. All right.
right, moving along. New business, final plan, major subdivision, Woodland Pond, Alley Pond, R7, Lot 2, and Johnny Lane, R8, 6-6, Altus Engineering. For the record, I'm Eric Sowery from Altus Engineering here on behalf of the applicant. I also have Troy Williams and Isaiah Plant with me. Um, since the last time we met, uh, we have obviously filed for final approval. Um, in doing so, we amended the plans to address engineering comments. I believe you have a copy of that in the packet. I think we've got everything there. Um, that's pretty much it. There was some correspondence between IFNW and uh, the town manager. Um, we're going to have a site walk with IFNW at some point. We think it's going to be next week, but it hasn't been finalized yet. It's going to be next week. Okay. We as, haven't got an as invite. Far, as far as I know, it's the 21st or the 22nd. I, I saw it. Those two dates passed around, but nobody actually confirmed. There was nothing, right. Yeah. The, it's so in it's, between those it's, two It's days. sometime next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, so we don't expect anything to change uh, from their prior recommendations. Nothing's really changed out there. We know we've had a Black Racer sighting, uh, which is kind of what we expected. This is Black Racer and, uh, and Blanding's Turtle neighborhood, as we've already uh, discussed. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. Um, you guys have any questions? Have at it. And the DEP visit, that's just a follow-up to to verify to verify what was already discovered or just to make sure there's nothing new out there? I, I think it's more just because you know, there's been a new sighting. They want to go out and look at the site again okay. just, just to be sure. Yep. Um, they also want, because it was directly a request from the town, okay. they wanted to make sure they were being responsive to you guys or to okay. the town Good. in general. All right. <clears throat> Hannah, do you have anything else, else to add? Nothing from me at this point. The only major, or I don't want to say major, the only major items, I said major again, um, from the last meeting really were just the environmental concerns that we were still talking about, and that's being covered with the site walk next week. Okay. We're waiting on mm, we could make a motion on this. Uh, what are the actions we could take today, Hannah? You can, um, if you want to wait for the results of the site walk, you can, um, I don't know if you have to officially table it. I don't know if Lee J is still on or not, but um, essentially wait until the next meeting for the approval to wait for the results of that site walk, if anything comes from it. Um, or you can, in theory, give a final approval conditional on um, any input results from the site walk if they require any changes. I think it would be prudent to wait. I don't know what your thoughts are. I'm fine either way. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'd like to wait. I make a motion that, that oh, sorry. Either way, it doesn't matter. I'd like to make a motion that we, we wait until we have all the information in front of us uh, prior to granting any approval. I agree in second. Okay. Further discussion? But just for an official action on that, it'd probably be best to, since you're going to wait, Phil, um, if you make that a tabling motion. Okay. okay. I will make a motion that we table it until after we have the DEP information. For well, the, the IFNW information. Oh, the IFNW. Yeah. The That's correct. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay. For the discussion. All in favor. Aye. Okay. Thanks, Thank guys. Appreciate it. All right. <coughs> Moving along. Preliminary plan. Major subdivision. Worcester Road. R thirty two seventeen dash E. R two zone. Providential Equity Development LLC.
All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. I commend you guys for cruising along. I didn't think I was going to get to speak until like 8 o'clock. Um, yeah, for the record, Mike Sudak, Attar Engineering, here on behalf of Providential Equity Development. I have Pat Carroll here with me tonight. And this is our first meeting for uh, preliminary subdivision. Uh, I'd be happy to give a brief overview. I know you guys saw this at Sketch probably a month and a half ago, but I can revisit if you'd like. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, so overall plans in front of you. Um, this is 77-acre parcel out in the R2 zone, right on the edge of the R3 zone, uh, Worcester Road, um, just south of the Cranberry Hill intersection. Um, and what we're proposing is a cluster residential development, single-family lots, uh, 14 lots in total, um, developing about 19 acres. So that leaves about 58 of the 77 for open space, about three-quarters of the parcel. Um, Simple travelway, um, about 1,400 feet long, ending in a cul-de-sac, um, designed to collect a road standards, uh, which is a little bit higher than this uh, level of subdivision would typically require. It's usually for 200 trips or more, and this is 140. Um, all the lots are going to be uh, individual private wells and individual uh, subsurface wastewater disposal systems. We've done a full uh, high-intensity soil survey, test pits, blanketed all over the site um, let's see wetland delineation was done over the winter uh, vernal pool study was done <coughs> in April um, what else do I have uh, I can switch sheets here so um, stormwater management um, for those of you that went on the site walk it's a pretty nice and clean site um, it all pitches towards Worcester Road um, so towards the beginning of the development um, stormwater is going to be accomplished by roadside swale on either side of the travelway and all that's going to be collected into a single uh, under drain soil filter right in the corner of uh, lot one which is the bottom left lot there as you're, you're looking at the screen um, so because of the amount of impervious we're generating, this is a stormwater management law permit, uh, so we trigger that tier. Um, we've provided our notice of intent to file, and if tonight's meeting goes smoothly, we're going to get that out the door tomorrow to start that 45-day review period, so we'll have that in hand here um, after 45 days, hopefully. Um, what else do I have? Uh, since the application package went out, we received a uh, sign-off from the Historic Preservation Commission, nothing of historic or archaeological significance, received our sign-off from the Natural Areas Program, no plant species of concern. Um, we haven't received anything from IFNW yet. We pinged them again uh, at the beginning of the week. Um, there's a species list that I think was in your packet. The only one of concern is the northern long-eared bat, which is just tree clearing limits um, for the, the, pup, <coughs> the uh, pups. Um, I think that's about all I have. We're not requesting any waivers, and yeah, we're before you tonight for preliminary completeness. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Yeah. Uh, only concern I had, and it, it stems from the site walk, is there is a, a man-made uh, drainage ditch waterway mm -hmm. uh, that goes right through lot six and lot seven, and it appears to flow from north to south. Correct which would have that outfall on the abutting property to the south. And, and my only concern is if, if you're doing uh, well in septic, mm -hmm. how, and I'm not an engineer and I'm probably expressing how, just how naive I am to how all this works, but uh, I, I just have concerns about how we are gonna prevent any potential contamination in that stream by putting a housing lot with a well and a septic on either of those lots and how it's gonna affect that abutter. Mm -hmm. That would be my biggest concern, and, and and if there there is any potential for that, is that something DEP would chime in on? And and if they do, would you guys be amenable to to maybe making that green space to to facilitate being able to do this without affecting that that runoff and and your abutter to the south? Mm -hmm. It's a fair question. Um, yeah, so uh, we we did discuss this in the field and. Um, yeah, uh, took a look at that channel. Um, it's a fair point. Uh, I think lot seven is more manageable of the two of them just because that swale doesn't necessarily bisect it. Uh, lot six is, yeah, kind of a, a tricky envelope, um, especially considering you need to have 
both the building envelope and your septic and well all contained within the same lot. Um, I, I think um, the route I would prefer to go, um, and of course happy to have a discussion on it, um, would be maybe to have a um, almost like a stormwater easement, you know, not a, not a developed stormwater easement, but an existing stormwater easement that we offset from either side of that swale, um, and that kind of limits what can what can take place in there. Um, you know, there, there's, a, there's a couple other options that we can go. Um, really, I, I would hesitate to um, want to declare that whole side open space just because of um, the limitations I have with making the same number of lots fit um, with the geometry of, of the remaining land. Um, you know, there's a couple other things we can do. We could pursue like a a shared septic system, um, maybe have lot six receive its uh, its sewer service from one of the abutting lots, or we can. Um, would it would it be at all mm -hmm. even reasonable to, to possibly I don't know? Can you shift lots and then keep that between the lots? That way that you're, you're you've yeah. got less of a occurrence of a, a potential contamination of that waterway and, and to the abutter to the south. Yeah. Also, yep. uh, on this, <laughs> as uh, I remember this particular uh, drainage area and it uh, and I asked the question about it as well and I was told that it was man-made that it's not a natural uh, thing so could it be diverted into a different different uh, way so that it becomes easier on on the on the south side mm -hmm. uh, homeowners than, uh, than it is now yeah, I mean, um, part of our part of our stormwater analysis is, is to demonstrate that the the flow and the developed condition is going to be less onto the abutting properties, which we are demonstrating that. Um, I, I know I discussed it in the field, but um, you know that that channel we're we're endeavoring we're we're going to keep it um, hydraulically separate from from all of the impervious that we're creating. So the roadside swale that's picking up all the impervious from this road is going to be disconnected from everything that that existing channel receives. That that channel receives quite quite a substantial amount of forest from all the way up on Cemetery Road. Comes down through the woods and I, th I think, you know, the farmers back in the day cut it because they didn't want the sheet flow continuing continuing into their fields. Um, so we're going to provide that le that level of certainty, but um, you know, I, I can I can take a look to, to kind of transition back to Mr. Roy's question. Um, I can take a look at trying to make, you know, what would that be, lots four, six, and eight, um, a little bit more reasonable of a building envelope and, and utility envelopes. Uh, I'm somewhat limited by, I believe, your minimum lot Set width. I, I think it's actually lot again. width yeah, yeah. Um, is, is the limiting factor here. Um, um, quick question for you, Mike. How yeah. far away are the test pits? I see them on the on the thing, but like, what's the scale? Like, what's the distance between the, those test pits and the that man-made water line? Let's take a look here. Looks like probably around three I'd say 40 to 50 feet, but they are downgrade. So if you're thinking of the nitrate plume going into that, it'd be going the opposite way. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, more than likely, the wells would be up higher than the septic, of course, right? Yeah. I mean, we're um, you know required to have them 100 feet apart. Um, if we run into constraints, we can case the well a specific way to reduce that radius. But but right now, yeah, we have that 100 foot radius, and we can accommodate that on on all the lots. Okay. So, certainly something I can. I can look into though, um, maybe getting a little bit more creative with the geometry, but I, I am really. Um, Me personally, I would hate to see you have to share a septic on someone else's right. lot. I'd rather yep. it be one on each one. Yep. Because then you're just I'm, opening up a whole bunch of worms when it comes to the. I'm in agreement. Yeah. Yeah. agreement. yeah. Also, with the shared septic, uh, there are issues for lenders for mortgages mm -hmm. on shared septics. So there are some programs that are not allowed because of yep. shared septic systems. So it's, uh, it's not an avenue we. To all lenders, right? Yep. So that would be. I mean, what you have now already conforms to what our ordinances ask for. Right. You know, I I um can kind of understand the uh, the the hesitance over just how it how it looks on the page. Um, you know, I I believe the design we presented functions. Um, 
you know, maybe that uh, lot has a little bit more of um, scrutiny when it comes to specific field locatings. Um, you know, there's going to be less variance in where that septic system has to go, where that well has to go. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think we can make it work. Okay. Is that some IFNW will will chime in on when they cut when they respond to you, or or is that not even on? That they would that, just be not their lane. No. Okay. Right. No. Yeah. Um, Hannah or Lee J, do you have anything to add? Um, yes, I have a couple questions. Um, I also, I know we haven't heard back from IFNW, but I did do a quick search of the beginning with habitat maps. Um, and there is nothing of concern as far as these maps show um, in the general vicinity of the subject area. Um, so I'm doubting that we will get much of a response um, as far as positive for any endangered species in the area from IFNW. Um, Obviously, we will still wait for that, but just from that standpoint. Um, also, just a couple questions. Oops, I just clicked away from my report. Um, what are your plans, and this may be a little bit premature, but what are your plans as far as dedication for the open space um, and the ownership and management of that? Yeah, uh, it's, it's a fair question. Um, so there's going to be an association that's that's created um, for the maintenance of you know everything within the stormwater easements, the road, um, and the open space would be incorporated into that. Um, the plan right now, um, you know, we're we're not proposing any I guess hardscape out there. It'll be for passive recreation, um, and by your ordinance, all the lots have to be within within a thousand feet of that to to accommodate that access. So. Um, we are keeping that, um, and there's direct access for for everyone directly off the right of way, so no one has to go through anyone else's lot to get to it. Um, I mean, I think that's all I have for you right now. Um, no, that answers my question. I wasn't sure based okay. on your application if you were planning on an HOA or not, um, and if there was any indication of a land trust easement or anything like that on the open space. So that answers that question. Um, let's see. You had noted that fire protection was to be determined. Um, is there any update on your plans for that? No, I mean, I, I believe um, the only correspondence I've had with the fire chief was just his um, his sign off on the cul-de-sac design. Um, I would assume we'd need to, to sprinkle the homes and have that supplied from the well so we can add some language as we get further along to have a, an NFPA 13 um, in all the houses. Um, I forget off the top of my head if I have to um, show where the closest hydrant is because I don't know where that is off the top of my head. But anyway, yeah, that's that's our plan moving forward. Um, also, okay. oh, always. Um, oh, um, is the this new road that you're building, is this going to remain private or will it be uh, for public acceptance? Is the road going to remain private? Uh, yeah, Pat Carroll from Providential Equity. Um, it's going to be remain private for the time being with the hopes that the town will take it over at the outset of the project. Okay. We're building it to, to the town's back. Perfect. To comment on that, the town I don't think is going to be accepting any cul-de-sac roads right now. They're looking for only um, through ways to adopt. Okay. So I'm not too sure on that, but okay. that's I'm pretty sure on that. Okay. Hmm. Very good. Good note of it. Yeah. Mr. Chair. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Hannah, would we... Would, would it be within our purview to ask for an independent review just of that waterway and the effects of how far we should have setback uh, septic from that, or, or is that beyond our scope? Um, I would say that is within your scope, um, but I'll admit I didn't fully follow that conversation. Um, Lee J looks like he has something to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I was just going to jump in. I mean, Hannah does a fine job, and I don't need to um, take her thunder away. Um, but on the septic system issue, um, as long as they show a hundred foot separation, um, most plans will end up showing circles between um, the septic system location and the well location. As long as those meet that standard, which is the state standard for separation between the two, they satisfy that unless you feel that there's some something else going on that may require further separation at your level. You could do that. My, the other my thing I do concern, oh, go ahead, Lee J. Sorry. The, well, I was gonna say while while I had the floor, the other thing um I would suggest is that even if the town is not in a um position um policy wise currently on accepting cul-de-sac roads, if it's going to be built to town spec, um, town spec with the assumption that it would be petitioned at some point in the future, um, I think you'll want to make sure that you have a third party inspection done during construction to make sure that all compaction and lifts and everything are done according to uh, the town spec. So, Lee J, my concern, I understand the, the well and the septic setback, but as I look at lot number six, I'm just, and, and again, not an engineer, but lot six, I'm, I'm just having a hard time seeing how they would get a, a house on there with the, the se appropriate separation for the septic and the well and still preserve that waterway without potentially contaminating, you know, one of their neighbors or having a very wet basement. That's, uh, you know, just... <laughs> trying to be proactive instead of reactive. Oh yeah, no, you you have, you know, you're within your purview to ask those questions and to look to something else. Um I'm not familiar with the plan. It's been Hannah's project and and I let her I let her go with those. Um so uh, I can't really comment specifically on that lot and the design. Um but certainly from a from a policy standpoint, you have the authority to um request um, alternate locations, if you want, um, or further separation uh, on that particular lot, if you want to do that. Would you be amenable to having a, a third party chime in on that as far as the design for that lot? And if, if they're not, if they don't see that as a feasible way to maintain that waterway and, and be able to put a home on there, would you guys be amenable as a second, a second course of action to changing the plan on that lot specifically? Thank you for the discussion, both Hannah and Lee Jay. Um I, I think our preference would be to switch the order of that. Um, okay. You know, we're, we're at preliminary completeness. You guys are going to get a few more whacks at this. I, I think I can maybe adjust one lot line and make it not perpendicular, make that lot area a little more accommodating. And well, you know, also it, that since that's a man-made mm -hmm. thing, you could move that over, correct? Which was my point. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know how right, right now um, we're not filing with the Natural Resources Protection Act. We're, the, we're in the exempted tier for wetland impacts. Okay. That's considered a wetland, even a man-made wetland. Right. So I, um, I would be is... I would be hesitant to to guess how they would see that. Okay. Um, but uh, I think I mean even if you could just move it around and it ends right. in the same spot, but just moving it around that little bit, I mean yep. that that would probably satisfy. Um, yeah. our thoughts and I think um, I think the way that I prefer to handle it is, um, you know, a as we move forward, I can come back with a slightly different configuration for those three abutting lots up top, four, six, and eight. Um, and if you know, at, at the next the next go around, when we're prospectively up for preliminary approval, if you're still unsatisfied, then we can have that third party review, or we can make that endeavor with. Uh, D I, I think D that would be a win for everybody. I mean, even yeah. yourself. I, I mean, if I'm buying a house, do I want to buy a house where, you know, I got a, a waterway running through my yard? Probably. These probably are all going to be not. beautiful. Yeah, they're going to be gorgeous <laughs> houses. But if your basement's wet, you know, yeah, all year round. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. just trying to, you know, one good steward to to your customers, but more so good stewards to the to the environment. But they're not open waterways when you're done. They're actually encased, aren't they? That one's going to be an open waterway that has an open bottom to culvert preserving the existing channel is the intent right now. Okay. So there's going to be your ele your elevated roadway, a roadside swale, 
that's then has adequate cover between a culvert to preserve that cut channel. Got it. So they're going to be they're going to be disconnected from. Yeah, I was under the impression that was totally covered and buried. Just for the portion that the road's going over it. Okay, got it. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, with the idea of changing those three lots around, mm -hmm. that kind of changes on if if it's complete or not. Is that correct? Vent. Well, I'll let him, I'll let Hannah yeah. go first. Or is this um, some, I, something that they could do after we find it uh, completed? Yeah, you can find the application complete at this point since they didn't provide everything they need to. It just may not physically work. Um, so you won't be pro approving the preliminary plan necessarily at this point since we're still working on that. But you can find the application complete. Okay, I'll make a motion that we find this application complete. I will second. Okay, for the discussion. All in favor? Second. Okay. Um, next is we Thank you, gentlemen. Complete. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. And now is setting the date for the public hearing. Um, the public hearing sets um, we're probably into late July because the 4th we're not going to be holding our meeting. Um, so I think that is... That's going to be the 20th of July. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll schedule the public hearing for the 20th of July. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving along. The second public comment. I'll open that up. Hi, Karen Mullane of 47 Alley Pond Road. Um, unfortunately, the developer has left the meeting early. He chose to leave early. And I was hoping that the vote that was started to be discussed at the last meeting to have a, another public hearing was going to be reopened, but that wasn't brought up. And he has chosen to leave early. I'm still going to ask that a vote be taking to have well, We the, can't vote on it right now because he's gone. Uh, but by we choice. Can, we can discuss that in the next meeting. Okay, thank uh, you. Yep. Um, there's that. Since Sunday, um, I've reported to the state six sightings of endangered species. One of them is a new spot of a black racer nest, um, probable nest. Unless you dig it up and see, you don't know for sure. I've been in contact with Derek Yorks. He confirmed it's probably a nest. So I have pictures of the um, snake going underground. So beautiful, four black racer snakes and two blanding turtles. So just since Sunday, which is kind of awesome. So they're still there. Um, and I would request that the town, uh, the board, please read the, the subdivision regulations, Article 11, 11.8 just talking about protecting um, the environment for the, the endangered species and whatnot. It, it's pretty interesting where this is very well known and documented what's there just to help protect that because otherwise they're on their way out. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's always ladies first. <laughs> Rick Rains, 18 Carolyn Drive. Um, I have no questions that would require the developer to answer them, but I do have a couple of comments. Um, one procedural one. In asking for documentation of um, public records um, that I had not been given at the last meeting to that date, um, I was told a week a week's time frame would be good to get them, mm -hmm. and I've received um, a very small percentage of what I had asked for, um, and these should be public records. These should be things that the mm -hmm. town has on file for for this project. 
and I have not received them. What, what pieces specifically? I have not, not received? received a completed application from the applicant. There's a blank one in his first packet back in February, but there's no completed one. There is no wetland delineation specifically. However, I did receive correspondence from the engineer in response to several questions that I had, and one of them was about wetland delineation and what the information I was given and the information I found in all of their documents. There appears to be four separate wetland delineations dated different dates by different people. And one of the concerns I have is if you look at all of their maps from the very beginning of this project to their final application, the wetland sketches don't change. And I don't know how you can have four wetland delineations by people and never have the wetlands change on the maps. My understanding is they put flags up, go back to their computer with their GPS coordinates and create a map. Never changes. Um, in my correspondence with the engineer, his responses generated more questions for me. So when he's present next time, I will bring them up in the form of possibly opening a public hearing so we could have a discussion, because I know we can't without him here. Um, and then just another point, not a question, just to let you know, um, in their watershed plans, on all four of their watershed maps, WS1 through 4, in their first packet, on the um, west side, of the Alley Pond Road part, they show a swale bringing the water all the way down to Karen's property. And then they show it ending there and the water just filtering out over her property. And this was not caught by the third party engineer either. And in my question to the engineer about that, he said, oh, well, I guess we'll put a swale in. Now. Karen's property is only five feet from the road and three feet below the level of the road. So that will be an engineering feat to get a swale in there without possibly moving the road. But my point more importantly is if this hadn't been caught by me, their watershed would be all through Karen's property, which is already full of sand from current erosion. So when I first stood in front of you months ago, what I said was I was here to support Karen and her environmental concerns and to make sure we followed the rules, that the T's were crossed and the I's were dotted. I stand here now with more questions than I've ever had about this project that I'd like to bring up in the appropriate forum. And I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Is it with it on? Nope. 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 Okay. <clears throat> Any else for public comment? All right, I'll close that. And uh, next is informational items. I have one. Okay. Uh, I know during our last meeting, uh, we discussed with the town manager the possibility of getting a statement or statement of uh, capacity from both the water and the sewer district. We did get an email from the town manager, um, including both the both of those departments, and they invited us for a tour. And, and I think a tour would be fantastic, but uh, the problem is it, it doesn't address the reason. I, I feel like we as the planning board need a written statement from both the water and the sewer department to uh, address three things. Uh, one would be what is the, avail what is the current capacity uh, that they are operating at for both producing wa drinking water and disposal of sewage. The second piece is, is uh, what available capacity is going to exist after we finish the final phase of the edge? And then the, thirdly, I, I would like to know what their demand signal for each organization is where they're going to need to request additional capacity as, as our town grows. And, and I think that's a, a huge valuable piece that we're going to need as a planning board in order to approve future, pro, uh, future projects that come before us because if we don't have that information, we're really putting the cart before the horse and, and we're setting us up for an infrastructure failure. Um, and, and when we get towards that demand signal, that's when we need to be looking for grant money and, yeah. and those kind of things to develop the, 
the facilities we need to support the town. And I, I really mm -hmm. feel like maybe maybe I didn't emphasize enough that we really wanted that in writing from from the managers of each of the facilities. Um, I, I I would love to schedule a tour. I'd, I'd like to see how. I, I guess they process that stuff, but. Uh, <laughs> Beyond that, we really, that's a tool that we need in order to be able to do our job effectively and take and care of the voters. I know that the sewer and water, we might just have to kind of uh, creep in on a selectman's mm -hmm. meeting. Mm -hmm. When they give out their reports, we might have to just go and follow and check out what they have to say or maybe even comment on it and try and get some information I, at that point too. And I think the selectman will provide great information, but I think that... Well, it, it, I'm I saying with the, the water... Uh, and the water treatment and yeah. the, the, the water plant and the treatment, they actually come and do a report. So if they're actually here, right. then we'll try and get it all together. I got gotcha. you. Okay. That, that might be the That's better. fair. I just think we need to have something in writing oh, yeah. from them. Oh, yeah. So or one, there's a, on there's a level, that, there's a level yeah. of accountability yeah. oh, yeah. other than, hey, we're taking a shot in the dark. And well, that, that would also get it on the record. Right. Correct. Yeah. That's, my whole, on the record That's my whole point. That's my whole point. That's the first thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Um, anything else? No? No? Um, we've had two people leave the planning board, so there is going to be two available positions. If um, anyone's interested, um, we're just putting it out. The town will be sending something out <coughs> for that information, but um, we just I just found out today that two people have left, so there is some openings available. Um, that's all I have. I, I have one more, one last item. Uh, I did not get picked up for select board, and uh, I want to thank the voters of Berwick for getting out there and, and voting as they did. Uh, I do want to apologize to our town clerk because she did put a lot of time in, and uh, unfortunately, due to a human error that was beyond her control on a very long work day, uh, as many of our public servants had. Uh, there was some misinformation that was put out, uh, and I was told that I had actually won the election, and short time after, I found out I had not. So uh, initially, I had asked for a recount, uh, but after talking to our, our uh, <clears throat> the persons that work for our town, uh, they took ownership of that, um, and I am fully comfortable with the count and the integrity of the vote. Uh, there was an exceptionally human moment, and I am looking forward to working with our newly elected selectmen and doing the best work we can for the town of Berwick. So I just wanted to make sure that was out there for public comment. Yes. Okay. Next is the adjournment. Uh, if there's nothing, no items for further consideration from the esteemed <coughs> Burgess meeting room in the depths of the Berwick Town Hall, <laughs> I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? All right. All right, good night. <laughs> I wasn't a